what's up to my fellow abolitionists and non-abolitionists as well. Uh, my name is Toby Harmon. I wanted to talk to you all about the works of abolition. And really, it's our five tenets of abolitionism. And what we've done is we've developed an acrostic uh, to help remember the five tenets. And the acrostic is ergon, E-R-G-O-N. And ergon is the, the Greek New Testament word for works. And so you could call it the works of abolition. Uh, I want to talk to you in this video about the first tenet of abolition. And that's the E in ergon. That as abolitionists we are evangelical. We see our evangelical Christianity as really the foundation of the work that we are doing. It's the reason for the work that we are doing. And the evil of, of abortion has become for us a great platform to share the gospel with a lost and a dying world. You see, just, just to change somebody's mind on abortion, uh, that, that's great. It's going to save lives. But to change somebody's mind on abortion, but leave them in the same eternal state that they're in, is a failure on our part. And, and as sad and as heart-wrenching as the reality of abortion is, even worse is the reality that those who have abortions, those who perform abortions, and those who participate in their practice indirectly are going to spend an eternity separated from their Creator. It's what Scripture calls hell. And so we, we don't want to see that happen. We think abortion is not just destructive to the infants who are dismembered in their mother's wombs, but it's also destructive to all those involved with the evil practice of abortion. Uh, a while back on the page, I posted a quote from John Piper. He says that when people benefit from wrongdoing or wrong thinking, they will turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to the mounting evidence for what is right and what is true. The mind selectively sees what will justify the desires of the heart. In the end, that is what must be changed, speaking of the heart. And so really, Piper's quote goes along with what Scripture tells us. Romans 1.18 says that men suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, in their love of their sin, or in seeking after what they desire, even though all the evidence is around them, you can give them the scientific arguments, you can show them that uh, the unborn is, is a human person from conception, you can give them the scientific proof for that, yet if, if they still want to follow after the sinful desires of their heart, their mind is going to selectively see what they want to see, and they're going to turn a blind eye to the reality of that. John 3, 19-20 also says, Light has come into the world, but men love darkness. In other words, they love their sin, they benefit from the wrongdoing, and so because their deeds were evil, they hate the light because they fear that their deeds will be exposed. And so the heart must be changed, not just its opinion, but entirely. The heart must be changed from a dead, lifeless, stony thing into a living, righteousness-loving, and Christ-seeking thing. See, the secular cannot change the heart of man. The secular can't tell us why hearts need to be changed because there isn't an objective morality which tells us what is wrong and right. The secular cannot tell us why it's wrong to kill a human person, why that's any worse than having the, extermin the exterminator out to spray for insects. The secular can't even tell us that hearts can be changed because after all, according to secularism, we're just material beings dancing to our genes.